Archie Slays. Or, also known as News You Never Realised You Needed to Know Until Today. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I have recently been analysing quite a number of video clips in relation to Harry's wife. They're very useful. She provides us with lots of opportunities for me to dissect the narcissistic dynamic for you, and live examples like that are particularly useful for showing you various facets of narcissism in action, which aid your education. But it also behooves me to bring to your attention the fact that despite we have been looking at the Invictus Games, now known as the Harry's Wife Games, that we've been looking at the ridiculous behaviour she exhibited at the Kevin Costner fundraiser, and, more latterly, the suggestion that she might have been in the running to take over from Dan Feinstein's seat in California, that she hasn't halted with the PR puff pieces. Why does Harry's wife use these PR puff pieces? Well, many people want to put forward a view to the world that causes them to be regarded in a particular way. Everybody likes to be viewed in a favourable way. That's, for example, if you were going out on a date, you wouldn't wear a jumper stained with egg and not have a wash. You would, if you're female, put on some makeup, do your hair, wear an attractive outfit, maybe apply some fragrance. You want to put the best appearance of yourself forward. When you're going for a job interview, you don't turn up late, fart as soon as you walk in the room and then go high five to whoever is interviewing you while sitting there and picking your nose. Instead, you turn up on time, you're well presented, you're prepared, you're courteous, and you give the best account of yourself. So, invariably, most people will behave that way. But when it comes to a narcissist, it goes further. It goes further than the general convention of putting your best face forward. It's done, of course, to ensure that control is obtained. It's done to draw the fuel to get the character traits and the residual benefits. And to someone such as Harry's wife, a middle mid-range narcissist, the presentation of a facade is particularly important. For her, her facade isn't amongst her family and friends in the town that she lives. It's worldwide. Having scrambled into the position of prominence that she has obtained through marriage to the Ginger Prince, she has then had to maintain this facade of being seen to be kind and caring and empathic, and to do that, and be regularly mentioned, costs money. The various supine publications, such as People, Tatler, Cosmopolitan, Town and Country, Harper's Bazaar, and of course, Hello! are all there to make money. They generally don't give a rat's ass about Harry's wife, but if she keeps paying them, they'll keep pumping out the PR publications. And the purpose of these PR publications serves numerous means. One, to ensure that Harry's wife is prominent. Two, this prominence enables her to assert control because she's seeking to influence people to believe that she's all of the things that are spoken about. A wonderful mother, a doting wife, a fashion icon, a pillar of philanthropic genius. It provokes responses, which is fuel, which she requires. It also assists in the management of her facade, which of course, as you know, is a residual benefit. Given the fact that she's plain boring and a talent-free zone, it's often the case that there's nothing that they can actually talk about. Mainstream media and social media are often festooned with articles about her because they're picking up on her latest catastrophic behaviours, whether it's the near-catastrophic car chase in New York, or purchasing an award, or snubbing the coronation, or turning up and crossing the street as part of a pap walk. They generate recognition, but invariably it's done from the position of criticism. Whilst that's useful to Harry's wife in the sense that she's gaining fuel, she doesn't like the challenges that come with it. And what she needs to do is maintain this blanket image whereby the publications put out what she wants to put out 
in accordance with the way that she wants to be seen by the world. And the problem that she's got is latterly, she hasn't really been doing that much, which could be put out there and seen in a particularly favourable light. Indeed, much of what she has done more recently is more likely to attract criticism than praise. Hence, she repeatedly has cause for these PR puff pieces to revisit the past. And there's another example of this with Hello! that has to go back some four years in order to find something to dredge up, and this time it's the exploitation of a child. The article leads with the headline, Harry's wife cheers as she pulls son Archie on a sleigh in the snow. Yes, this is from when they were on Vancouver Island in 2019, and is seen fit to, one, bring up the past, two, triangulate an audience with a child without that child's consent or knowledge. Danielle Stacy is the poor sap that has had to write this. She remains trapped in that dungeon beneath the streets of London. And she writes as follows. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have resided in Monte Shitcho, California, since summer 2020. But before they made their decision to step back as senior royals, they spent some time in Canada. Archie was just six months old at the time when Prince Harry and Harry's wife spent Thanksgiving and Christmas in a secluded property on Vancouver Island in late 2019. Footage from their time there was included in the shit flicks docuseries Harry and Harry's Wife, released last December, bringing up the past by bringing up the past. Adorable home video show little Archie's first experience of snow and his first ever sleigh ride. Harry's wife can't contain her giggles and cheers of delight as she pulls her infant son along in the snow. Archie, wrapped up warmly in a mini Bowden panda snowsuit, looks in awe of his snow-covered surroundings as he sits contentedly in a red wooden sleigh. Meanwhile, Harry's wife's mum, or rather, meanwhile, mum Harry's wife is dressed in a hooded parka coat with black-fitted jeans, brown boots, and a bobble hat. We're then invited to watch a video of the outing. Describing the family's time in Canada, the Duchess says in the documentary... I just loved being there. It was just so peaceful. You could breathe for a minute. Harry and Harry's wife's decision to take a six-week extended break. From what? They don't do anything. In the country came before their announcement to step back from public duties in January 2020. The pair carried out their final engagements in March that year. Yada, yada, yada. A complete nothing of an article. Archie gets used. The past is brought up. And it's done to maintain that facade, that she's a, a playful mum, that she was enjoying relaxing away from the scrutiny of the public eye by putting herself again in the public eye and that of her son, who is unable to consent. So much for emotional empathy for him. Archie's on his sleigh, but he's there to be used because he's simply a commodity, an appliance to be utilised by his mother. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.